that is a udp base and ethernet if you have a that network uh, layer you want to connect and will be sending the data that will be follow with that ethernet so it's a network layer process everything will go with ethernet and modbus modbus is a communication protocol that will be working to send the data via client and server and modbus majorly using that all the companies because it's not a single uh, a sensor is a not limited sensor we can connect we can connect a number of sensors multiple ports multiple readers they will be provided so majorly the company using the modbus and your opc ua so these two majorly they will be using it and once the data collected and the communication will be transferred via mqtt amq amqp or rabbit mq hive mq lot of the uh, integration protocol is available based on that they can transfer it and few they have own access to directly send to the cloud so few api they will be developed based on that they can do it it's like a sdk api so based on that they will be directly enter into the cloud port and rest rest mostly you will be using for your any web application interfaces that will be achieved via rest only and http so directly we can scrap the data via http that is also possible if you are go with the programming based then jvm is a programming based uh, message protocol that will be transferred via java message services that they will be use it any question okay so edge analytics is a short idea i just providing you say so edge, edge analytics is nothing but the decision immediately will be taken by the edge system and that decide the decision output only will be stored into the our cloud environment it will not be sent that the entire raw data it will take some competition and will be providing the solution that solution only will be transferred to the cloud so the decision we can take very faster to compare with the raw promise operations because the raw data will be sent to the cloud once the data will be reached and then we, only we can do some aggregation and then we will be take some decisions but edge analytics we are going to take the decision before once the data what are the data we have based on that we can take the decision that information only we can transfer it so very fast decision making we can take via this edge analytics majorly the company company you are using with edge analytics as well as they will be go with normal based on based on the business problem uh, especially the alerts and triggers everything will be follow with edge analytics platform only. because in the production based company they will be that production phase if any problem will be arise immediately they must know what was the problem that will be we will be see with that network layer everything we have seen right so that that decision if it is take delay then it will be a big impact to us so that's the reason they will be using this edge analytics in that mainly that production phases and that final output only they will be using it it's like a lambda architecture or copa architecture they will be using to making the decision with their own so topology so network topology also you know very well because this is will help for the edge analytics platform they must know this topology for the net, uh, edge analytics decision because they will be using multiple plc or scada they will be transferring the data but you if, if you missed this network topology then you will not be getting clear decisions so this is must this is must important so ring is a normal ring topology and mainly the people will be using for mesh and star so mesh is any computer any machine will be connected by the with another machine we cannot restrict it like that the mesh will be available star will be in centralized machine will be control all other devices these two mainly they will be using the production phases okay so rest of that is a basic understanding i just providing and the recent one is digital twin the nowadays the industrial iot they are migrating to the digital twin so which is nothing but they will be taking the decision based on that simulation devices because we are going to use a particular sensor or anything it will take some more time so they are restricted by this just a moment oh sorry so this will be help to take the immediate decision with a implementation also so if you are going to see here this is the actual device is working okay 
okay i'm not sure so here the actual device how it is working based on that we can simulate it this is how it is working what are the control will be handled everything we can take some simulation this simulation what is the frequency data will provide for each sensor everything we can decide it here itself once it is finalized then only we can migrate here so this is majorly the people will be migrating to the digital twin operations it will be cost benefit and decision making very fast with this operations so this is a very important thing that upcoming IO, IOT platform completely they are planning to this digital twin, AA analytics and uh, uh, parallel processing. Both they will be go with this process one. Okay, any question? Yeah. I request the audience to put your question in the chat box, please. Okay. Okay, no question. So we can see small hands and how we are going to do this. So this is a small data, how we are going to produce it. So this is a sample sensor I just connected, but now my device is not available. I just create some simulator. Based on the simulator, I just transferring the data MQTT. This MQTT will be transferred to the Kafka because the MQTT and Kafka, that is a major difference. MQTT is a lightweight operation. Once the data will be sent, it will not be stored anywhere. So that is the reason MQTT is like a uh, consumer and behavior only they will be doing it. But Kafka will be followed with the duplication and the broker will be controlling with the follower and leader operation. Everything. So that is the reason they will be using MQTT and Kafka now. And once the Kafka will be collected, this Kafka, how we will be transferred via the Spark. Spark analytics we can go into see now. This Spark we can plan to go with parallel processing and edge analytics, how they will be using some basic idea I just provided. And final output we just going to store in Hadoop. So this is, we are going to see it now. First, I just show that examples. So this is a sample data. I just take. Hello. Guys, any question? If no question, can you please go to the mute? Okay. So here you can see. I just take few data only as a Raspberry Pi, how the data will be, this, this is a kind of digital term only. I just going to create as a simulation part. This simulation is going to be performed with our data. Once it is finalized, we can use the re real uh, data with this spot. One minute, I'm getting chat. Actually, this is an example for the Raspberry Pi simulator I'm going to use it. So uh, I'm going to use this humidity sensor to connect for the temperature and humidity. So this is the code for the simulation I just derived and data will be sent by a pulse width 20 to 32, 20 to 32 sizes with floating operation so, uh, data type with temperature and humidity they will be go with 60 to 70 ranges. It will not be crossed more than that. And all the data I just convert into the string format and this string data will be sent into the MQTT client. This is the IP that I am located. This IP will be transferred and default port number is 1883 that I just located here. And it's keep allowing with 60 minutes. So once if any data will not come within a 60 minutes, it is going to be uh, failed. That is the use of this keep allowing operation. And finally, I just sent it to the uh, name of the OS for the simulator is actually I'm using for the Ubuntu the cluster here, the pseudo distribution cluster. That this data will be sent to this cluster. There only Hadoop will be stored because that operation we can say see where this Hadoop. Okay, so Ubuntu platform I'm using right now. So data will be published and then it will be stopped. And time every 20 seconds I'm planning to send the data. Okay, any question here? I just run the code, then you can get some idea about it. So this is the data I'm sending now. 
one minute. For the time being, I just run for every two seconds. So this is the sample data I just prepared and sending to the cloud environment. So this data we are going to fetch via this MQTT sub broker to uh, subscriber based on then we just migrate into the Kafka. Now we just go here and see that. And it will be sent to this host queue as a topic name. Here's some idea about topic, right? The Kafka classes they will be taking out. So I just locate and see the data. So whatever the data they will be produced, it just finishing here. Okay, so same data will be published. Once the data comes to the our MQTT, then we just plan to move into Kafka environment. So this code also I have written because if I'm going to write, it, then it, yeah. <laughs> Hello. If you don't have any question, you can go to the mute. I'm sorry. So in MQTT Kafka, I'm going to use Paho MQTT as a library that will be helped to connect with MQTT with Kafka and Roman. So that is a th three platform. It will be available. The Kafka producer integrated with MQTT Kafka run. Here it will come. So on connect, on message, and on disconnect. So these para three parameters will be helped to making your uh, data balancing with the MQTT platform. So during the connection, what it should do? So it will be subscribe the data while it's connected from the topic, and then on message while the data will be sent to the Kafka environment, it should be in decoded because Kafka will be followed with byte serialization and string serialization. Two only, it will be majorly suggested. Other, you can go with custom serialization. So I'm taking for the string serialization right now and convert the data and, bring, and I will send to the cloud environment. And while I'm disconnected from this environment, what I have to do? So this three is an important. I just connect via this respective IP with that whatever I'm sending that simulator, right? That IP I just connected with the same port number and will be following. There's a looping operation completely will be transferred. So Kafka producer also, it will be followed with bootstrap server. Already you know about this bootstrap server, topic, producer, consumer, and the follower, and ISR, I guess you know, right? So that will be followed with Kafka enrollment. And data will be sent via encoded UTF of a string format to the end, our enrollment. Okay, I just going to start the Kafka cluster here, then you'll get some base idea. So this is the Kafka. Okay, so before starting the Kafka, what we have to do? Anyone? What are the things we have to majorly focus? We have to start, yeah. Kafka will be followed with Zookeeper. So Zookeeper we have to enable, then only the Kafka cluster will be balanced via Zookeeper. And then we can go with brokers and integration with uh, producer or consumer. So now we're just going to start our Zookeeper now. Servers. So Zookeeper, I'm going to start with the configuration of Zookeeper properties. 
okay so zookeeper is just started now yeah okay this perfectly started now i'm going to start with our kafka cluster so Kafka Kafka server start and then this will be following with the zookeeper so I want to produce the configuration also config server properties and then additionally I want to add override options If any topic will be erased or enabled before, it's just going to be overwrite. So the communication is started right now with the Zookeeper and Kafka cluster is just started. Yeah, any question, Krish, Christian, Bernard? You have raised your hand, any question? Stop playing games, mute. Mute children, playing games is very useful. It keeps you healthy and it also keeps you happy. No, sir, no doubt, sir. Okay. So now Zookeeper has started. Okay, I just go with some platform. What I'm doing with the architecture that I'm going to show. You'll get some basic idea. So this is actual our sensor. Okay, so sensor for the example I'm transferring now. This sensor will be sent to our MQDT. So there is a connector in between this. And then MQTT going to work with our Kafka cluster. Because there is a small one sensor will be connected via MQTT. If I have multiple sensors in different location, everything will be connected with their own MQTT connector and all the MQTT will be sent to our Kafka environment. From this Kafka cluster, we are going to access via our Spark job. As a stream analytics, now I'm planning to go with structure stream. So here, I just start the cluster. Once the cluster has started, it just communicate with our MQTT and sending the data. Once the data we will be fetching via our Kafka cluster, this will be a, a, act as a producer actually. This is as a producer. Actually, sensor is a producer. And MQTT will be act as a producer for us. And then Kafka cluster, we are going to send the data to Spark. So Kafka, Spark will be act as a consumer port because it's going to be consume the data and then do operations. Okay, this is the base. Based on the Spark, we are going to 
store the data into our Hadoop environment. So how do we can store the data with any file format? We can store here. Based on that, some aggregation will be planned. From here, it will be directly transition we can do as well that edge analytics, like a computation output also we can store. Anything we can do, achieve a spark to Hadoop environment. Okay, so you have some base idea right now, I guess. Sir, uh, good morning. Uh... In this, uh, we don't want to connect any Raspberry Pi Arduino between uh, sensor and um, um, QBTT. Directly, it will be connected. Uh, yeah. Raspberry Pi, if you have access via IP, then only you can do it. Because Kafka cluster, you cannot directly write. Only the topic where I can do. Yeah. Let's say, for example, Raspberry Pi is a lightweight size, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot use it more. So if you are trying to send the temporary cache will be huge, it will be raised mm -hmm. internally. Mm -hmm. So MQTT will help to avoid the things because it's mm -hmm. like a uh, mm -hmm. publisher or operation only going. Once you send the data, it will not be stored anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if other things that all the data will be stored in the cache locker. So mm -hmm. that will be a big impact. It will be go to hang your system. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, thanks. Because if instead of MQTT, if you're trying to install Kafka cluster here, Kafka's uh, producer operation here, it will be keep on following all the temp files. Because based on the Kafka, you'll be using some blocks analysis, right? Retention period, policy, everything you can store here. So that will be referred with your sensor port. So you can avoid it. Mostly lightweight operation, they will not be using with Kafka directly. Yeah, Christian, any question? Again, you are raising hand. Any question? Uh, sir, where it will get uh, stored, sir? You said something I didn't hear properly, sir. No, no, no. We are not stored. The temporary caches will be occupied. What are the data, serialized data you'll be sending, right? That will be completely occupied with your Raspberry Pi or Arduino. Arduino majorly we cannot use it because very less only we can connect it. It's like a, there is no OS operating we can go with Arduino. Raspberry Pi, they will be providing some Raspbian OS. It's like a kernel integration you can achieve to install many applications. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Will it be compatible with any sensor? Yeah, you can. This is a small sensor I'm showing. Uh, for the temperature sensor or if you connect via Modbus or OPC EUA, then lot of the uh, sensor you can connect at the same time. Every network bandwidth you will be send up to 1 KB to 10 KB size, sorry, 1 MB to 10 MB sizes of data you can send it according to the network bandwidth. That's an important while you're sending the data. Otherwise, what will be happen? The data will not be properly will be sending to that. That we can handle it. That's a kind of watermark operation that we are going to see in the demo. Okay. Can you name documentation website for this simulator? Uh, I will send this and also I will refer where we can get this documentation. Okay, Vikram. Shall we go? Any question? Okay. No, I guess. So till now, what we have done, just MQTT have raised, Kafka cluster just boot up. Now we just want to send this data MQTT to Kafka. So this is the code already I say. So this code I'm going to run here, the same code I just told. Zookeeper started, Kafka, in this one. Okay, so we can see with consumer also. First, we can start the consumer, then only it will be sending the data. We can see in consumer console. Hmm. 
consumer what is the name consumer consumer okay this console consumer i'm going to use it now so then console consumer i'm going to connect via our bootstrap server okay so this is a basically default only i'm using so bootstrap server so localhost default bootstrap server will be followed with 1992 and then it's going to be sent some data the consumer will be following the same only so there is a mqtt topic name is host queue and kafka topic name i have created kafka topic 1 so that with the short name so i'm going to locate now okay this is a topic hyphen hyphen this is a topic name i just locate it and transfer in the data now so this is the consumer mqtt will be raised and sending the data keep on to mqtt from mqtt to uh kafka so okay we will not start the kafka still empty it to kafka we have to intermediate layer we have to connect now so the same code here i just write so same host queue and uh, kafka topic both will be in same only and on message on disconnect on connect okay everything is same only so no issues i just run now now it is connected and fetching the data from our iot sensor that mq did thus whatever the data will be sent that will be received here so actually this is the flow so this is the mq did to kafka will be sending the data we can see via our console there is a console consumer i am using to see it what are the data will be sending from our this code okay so same data this is line of simulator will be produce the data sent to mqtt mqtt will be sent to our kafka so every one minute i just locate i guess so data will be populated every two seconds i guess yeah so this the data will be time stamp and which device will be sending the data and what is the temperature value and what is that humidity value so all this for i'm getting as a parameter value that i'm going to locate and fetching via our spark okay till now i just connected and transferring the data any question so till now we have completed this part so kafka cluster will be connected now spark is consuming the data from kafka cluster that we are going to see it now any question okay so now i'm going to start a spark job so in spark there is a two types of streaming is available one is d stream another one is structured streaming now we are going to see via structured streaming only the reason behind most of the operation if we go with structured streaming efficiently we can handle the data there is a spark back end they will be using some architecture with data frame catalyst talk to is something is available so that delta caches or whatever the caches you can achieve via data frame is very fast efficient because that completely follow with the structure for data only so that's we plan so i am going to import 
SQL session report. I just start Spark session. Spark session dot builder. I have name FDP twenty twenty. No spark session build. Okay, and then I'm using local only. And then data create. Now spark has to create a spark session. Now what we have to do, we are going to fetch the data from Kafka. So data frame equal to spark dot uh, read stream. If any stream you can achieve via read stream only. In format of Kafka, you have to mention it. And for the time being, I just send the data very less. Once the code development is completed, then we can increase the size. So just take this is the boot server details. So in this option, I can mention, okay. And this is a Kafka bootstrap server. Kafka dot bootstrap service. As a key value pair, I can provide. And then I want to provide host name. <coughs> Subscribe. So this is the topic name. I'm going to subscribe now. Okay. So first we can see the data will be subscribed properly or not. Then we can go back. So right string format, just console. I just send, seeing the data here, dot option. Any question? Option is a truncate and the output model we go with append. This is enough. Okay, now we just plan to start it now. And keep on listening. I just start. You can see the data properly will be fetching out, then we can do all on ourselves. Spark Kafka SQL. Zero point ten and two point twelve. Okay. Two point eleven I am using I guess. There is a package is available in okay. so this is a spark will be in dream only. So packages, I'm going to locate. Okay, so this is package I'm using now. 
So simply spark hyphen submit and then I'm just providing the package and then MQTT spark yeah, cut the structures too. Yeah, now package is running. Once the data properly we have fished up, then we can go further. One of the following specific couple sub subscriber. That is something we have missed. Packages for the Apache Spark of for questions that I have located. Everything is correct. And then success Subscriber is wrong. Okay, so IP address is wrong one. Okay, now I'm locating the IP address properly. Run it now. Subscribe KFKTPK one correct boost up server we just located the space with the Kafka source see the document Subscribe name, most of server, okay. Better we can do one thing. Sending the data. Here we can start, then we can see. Yeah, Spark 2.4 only. I just connected everything correct. Then what is the problem? Okay, same error showing now. 
the following option must be spread with Kafka so subscribe subscribe so this is the subscriber uh, read spark dot read string format and then option server okay correct Kafka bootstrap server only we have to locate locate address subscribe we can provide this topic name okay one minute we can see this spark session is an enable only let me check with the old code one minute The raid stream Kafka Spark option bootstrap server host ID and then option subscribe option subscribe Kafka topic one okay hello guys can you please go to mute Subscribe. Okay. What I mentioned. Okay. 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 Got it. Thank you, guys. Okay. So that is a spelling mistake. Subscribe B. I just mentioning incorrectly with the P. Yeah, now it's fetching the data. We can see one data every 20 seconds. It's just producing the data. Thank you, guys. Actually, I missed. So now those are string serializations. The data will be sent to Kafka as a serialized format. Now, probably we can fetch the data. And this is the topic. What is the topic I'm fetching? What is the partition of data and the offset number? These are all reference to fetching the data again. If suppose we missed in the checkpoint options we can fetching the data via partition and the offset and what time the data will be received this information also will be available now we just want to convert from that value of this serialization format to our normal format that is we have to go with the casting operations thanks guys now i can move So DF1, I'm just going to create from DF. I'm going to slicing the data. So select expression is available. Based on the select expression, I'm going to casting the data. Cast of value. But before starting the cast, we have to, okay. Already I imported the function everything. So cast of value. And string.
yeah proof there is a type error cast the before we have received the value so it is correct just run again So value I have located. Second error. Okay, everything we have to go with caps. Value as a string. Any question guys? Okay, so now the value will be decentralized string serialization data we just seeing now. So whatever the record will come that we can see here. Now properly we can retrieve the data. Now here we are going to do some slicing operation to fetching our actual. Just like this. So the, the data with comes with double quotes, df2, df1 dot, I'm going to slicing the data first, with column, body, for example, the data I'm going to split now, based on the split function, so df1 dot value will be split by comma separator. I'm going to locate it. You can see now. So uh, you told we have two types of streaming, structured streaming and de-streaming. Why are we using structured streaming over de-streaming in this uh, project? Uh, de-stream, we have to provide keep on alive time. It will be following with the batch processing. De-stream is like a near real time uh, streaming only. But structured streaming, we can achieve via real time uh, flow also because while you're creating a d string what you have to do you have to mentioning the timeline how many seconds it will be now available then only the spark streaming context will be enabled but the d stream is not required everything will be go with the spark session okay. 
okay because you are going to create a ssc equal to that context you are going to create where you are going to create it and how many time the time frequency you should mention in this time if suppose i am sending the data every one minute i am going to set the d stream with 30 seconds or something then it will not be in alive that's the problem. It completely follow with the batch processing operation the machine. And all the data will be considered as an object. So object handling with your actual platform is very difficult. Okay, that's the reason we just completely migrated to the structure streaming. And structure streaming very efficient way we can handle it. Okay. Clear? Now I just slicing the data. Now what I'm going to do, this is the first data for the time, second for uh, device name, third for temperature, fourth for, uh, what can I say, uh, humidity. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create with column operations. First one is a timestamp. As this is the body value, right? So column of body, I'm going to locate this data. I'm going to get the first value as a timestamp value. Body of first value, it will come this one. We'll see. We can see one by one if it is work, we can do the rest of it first. Timestamp. Also, we have to cast. I guess. Okay. So timestamp we just split, but it comes with quotes. So what we have to do, we just remove the quotes, and then we can go further. So regex replace. I'm going to apply with comma. The data will be split. Um, Okay, separately I can do. DF one A equal to DF one dot with column body just to one comma red X replace and go with this value. So values already available that I'm going to split by quotes. So this is the escape character, regex replace, I'm going to apply value. It will be pattern and replacement I want to provide nothing. And DF1, A, I'm going to locate here. And body, I'm going to look at you. Yes, Abhidami, any question? Something now. I think the data DF body one. Column name, pattern, and replacement. Shelf is correct. Correct one I provided. Body one has a cast as a value. I am collected. 
Castor and regex replace will be working with our values. df2 with column body will be following here as well. with the column body split to df body okay sorry data frame incorrectly located no this is a escape operator so escape operator you must go with backslash that's an important Yeah, properly we can fetching the data now. Timestamp. Okay. Here after no issues. Then I just cast into timestamp. Here after I can easily I'm going to fetch in my data. Okay, first will be in timestamp, second record will be our device name. So this is the second record. So array of one I'm going to locate and this value by default as a string only. So we don't want to cast anything. Third record will be followed with the temperature. Temperature will be second index and that will be in double this is a floating value the next one is humidity and i am going to locate with the now all the record properly i just sliced and we can see the output here All the record properly fetched out. Line number. How much can you refer the line number? Which one? Yeah. Now I can probably fetching all the records separated. So timestamp, device name, temperature. And humidity so sliding part is completed we can separately select the data now third df3 what i'm going to do df2 dot select this column only i'm going to select to see that output just a minute this Just a minute, I'm getting a call. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. Temperature and humidity. So now I just slicing the data and separately I just split it. Now everything will be in structure format. So only the four record with respect to data type I apply time date time as a timestamp device name as string temperature as a double humidity as a double so only four record I am going to fetching now okay now what I am going to do I just increase the time speed here simulator speed from 20 to 5 second now we can see the data Every five seconds, it just produced the output. Now we can see that very fast. For better understanding, I just give with one second, every one second. So immediately the batch process will be creating the record. So there is a communication between this MQTT Kafka and Spark now. And here you can see that these stream operation will take some time, but Kafka structure streaming with the Spark, it will take very fast to fetching the data without daily. Because in the back end, they will be using that serialization and catalyst optimizer and the whole code, stage code generation, something is there. So that efficiently it will be identifying your query and sending it. So this is the way you can fetching the data very faster from Kafka, sorry, Spark. That is a comparison you can see. Even 256 record will be available. Based on the distributed environment, Spark efficiently there will be send the thread, fetching the data very fast. Okay, so now I just slice the data. Now what I'm going to do, I just going to write the data into Hadoop environment. df three dot the right string. I'm going to convert as a JSON format and then df3 by stream format and then location we have to provide. So option, first we can provide the checkpoint location. Checkpoint location very important while you are losing your data this will help to fetch it. So here this code actually is going to be run here only. Okay, this is not required now. DFS siphon ls slash user data failure. Okay, so this many demons is running. I'm going to create a log with respect to this place. Checkpoint location always will be store your log about your lost data access. So that information, logs is a directory is there. I'm just going to locate that log and creating FDP, let's go 2020. So in this place only, all the log information will be stored about the Kafka integration with this form. Now what I'm going to do, once the checkpoint is set, then only you can store into your Hadoop and Roma. That is a pop where actually you are going to store the data. So slash user big data PDF. And then that is a log. This is the actual data. So FDP 2020 JSON. So this is the directory I am going to locate it. Done. Start. 
okay so code we have written successfully now what i'm going to do i just going to upload this code to hadoop environment and submit as a spark submit mode just take it out this code just paste here so there is a code recently i just developed i just take it out pasting here just to verify the code everything okay so this is not required because at run time we have to provide and this is actually i'm going to provide as a local host and everything same only so now what i'm going to do i'm going to submit this job of course for the time being i just stop this Okay, Spark job is started. We'll see the data properly. Okay, data sliced. Something wrong. SDFS metadata log will be wrong. Name node is in safe mode, okay. We have to release the name node. So DFS, DFS. Name. DFS admin. I forgot the command. Safe mode have to release. Leave, sorry. Okay, safe mode is off. We just check all the demons are running or not. Okay, name node, data node, everything's running. H column where for the zookeeper also running now. Now I just submit the job again. Okay, Spark job is communicating internally. Okay, so data has been read. We can see if any data here, the same we can see via our Hadoop environment also. Okay, 
okay so now started yeah this one is record it's going to be fetched up this record is going to be insert into our hard you can see here in hard directory So this is the path for the data I'm going to store. I'm reducing the speed to 10 seconds once. DFS. That's a mistake. I find the MS. Yeah, this much record is now written into Hadoop environment. For the sample data, I'm going to locate now. DFS, DFS, I find cat this record okay so there's the data so timestamp device name temperature and humidity everything will be compressed as a json format and will be stored here so likewise all the data will be stored Okay, so this is the data, whatever we are fetching out, the timing. What time I'm just fetching the data? 12.28, the record, that's pretty much four is the device name. What is the temperature value? What is the humidity value? Like that we can distribute it with the stone. So from there we can do analysis. This is a kind of speed layer process we are doing. In Lambda architecture, another one is called the service layer, the support, it's a different. Okay. So the same, you're going to see that our log also, what kind of data would be stored. All the log and session information will be stored here. It's like a checkpoint. And whenever the job is going to be paid here, it help to rewrite the data. So here you can see commits information, metadata, offset information, sources. Likewise, the data will be stored. That's it. And uh, my time will also end. So any question, this is we have seen. Sir, a small question. Uh, yeah. Uh, if it is kind of the video, uh, video transmitting uh, so such kind of the things, how to do it? Uh, come again, video? Video kind of, uh, example, we are connecting uh, a camera to the... Uh, yeah, that's just by array, you have to convert by a Kafka. Then only you can, it's like a frame. Directly you cannot use a video there. If you yeah. want to slice the video as a frame, that yeah. frame you can store it. Yeah. That's a video streaming analytics we have achieved with the CNN algorithm yeah. and machine learning platform to identify the, some uh, patterns. For aggregate culture, we have used that. But mm -hmm. there you have to use for the byte array operations. And then only you can uh, get the data. And also while slicing your frame, sometimes it will be in little blur. So you want to apply some computer vision concept, then only you can slice in the data. That is all you have to do in at front end. And you have enough computation power. Okay, thank you, sir. It's a wonderful session. Okay, so any other question? Nothing, sir. Thank you, uh, wonderful others? session. Others? Participants can ask questions. Raise your hands. Uh, can we have the graphical user interface for all things that we have done? Where? Graphical user? Graphical user interface. Yeah, 
that's based on the rest api no i just want to know where you want to use the graphical user interface so whatever the thing that you have done uh, by using the command line arguments yeah uh, that you can you use you who is a kind of operation you can use it there you can develop the code there and you can do it Okay. Okay. Thank you. Or sir. if you want to use as a like a, uh, a plug and play operation, then there is a tools is available. It's like a low code, low code something. You don't want to code anything. You just want to plug and play something. You have to do. So data factory in Azure as well as those uh, things is available. So there you can directly you can do that. But the streaming that data simulation now I'm using for the code perspective. If you have a real device, it's not required. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, Manikantan Dharma, you have raised your hand. Any question? Yes. Sir, Manikantan yeah. Dharma, sir. You can ask okay, questions. Okay. Sorry, he mentioned as a sorry in chat. No issues. No problem. Any other question? Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Dr. M. Saravana? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Ah, yes, yeah, sir. please. Uh, sir, uh, it was a very good session, sir. We are uh, very useful for us. So, one small you. doubt, sir. We need to know that how the flow of integrate of these platform first Hadoop, Spark, then Kafka. Is it right, sir? Uh, it's not How like that. This platform, sir, because that these are all, uh, independent. Yeah. Distributed parallel, you can go via big data platform or something else, a BigQuery GC parallel, also you can do it. So the platform decision by you, you are not taking that piece. That's what the architecture will be. Because we have done some project with uh, GCP platform also. There they will be implement all the data with PubSub with uh, Google BigQuery. And uh, we'll be using Apache Beam there to slicing the data. And uh, that will be followed with bucket and stream. Both we can do it. So that architecture is the open source everything we will be used right now. So sometimes they'll be expected with a costly of operation and efficiency manner. So that they will be modified. Okay? okay. So based on your business problem and the business architecture, you have to use this tool. Okay, sir. Okay, because I'm okay, using I'm Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, sir, on top of uh, Hadoop, we have to install this path, right, sir? Uh, yeah, correct. It will be working with the Spark integration with the Hadoop only. Spark will be act without Hadoop also. Oh, yes, sir. That's only my, my doubt, sir. For, yeah. uh, what the purpose without we the Hadoop. With the Hadoop? Mm, yeah. Without Hadoop also, Spark will be act as a separate cluster. That's what Databricks tool was introduced. Who has developed that Spark as a Matai Zagaria? He is a founder for that the Databricks. That's a separate Spark cluster. If you want, you can mount your Hadoop. Okay. But okay. the Hadoop is a concept. They are using this concept for yeah. their operations, like a data lake, you heard, data river, data pond, something, a lot of things is there. They are implementing their concept. Okay. But Spark is an efficiency manner to handle your data. Yes, sir. But as you said that the zookeeper, I think so that zookeeper is present from the Hadoop, right? We are getting from the Hadoop. And, uh, Hadoop uh, Zookeeper will run without Hadoop. That's a base for monitoring purpose. If you're using a Hadoop, you want to monitor it. Yeah. So Zookeeper will be helpful okay. on it. Here also, Kafka, we will be going to enable the Zookeeper cluster. It just keep on okay. monitor your all the demons are active or not like that. Uh, Rate node, name node, or Kafka cluster integration, everything is failure. We can identify. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, actually, I want to apply the computer vision and I want to capture some video in some places. And uh, can you uh, recommend which technology will be better in this? Like how and where we can keep and how to analyze that? Uh, computer vision you are going to apply then um, I have to detect some motion like you know, hand motion and all and uh, I have to find some relevant pattern in that 
Actually, what we have done, we will be using Azure Auto ML platform to analyze all the operation and will be auto scheduled there itself. So there they will be using for computation cluster, instance cluster and Docker. They are using three types of com compute instances they are using internally. So that's very easy for us while I was doing our develop in that perspective. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm using that only part. So I cannot assure you to give you better suggestions with computer visions. Because everything they will be is friendly, they will be provided. Okay, so these are all be freeware, yeah. right? We can, as a researcher, we can use those. Uh, freeware, I'm not sure, sir. I'm not sure. Because I, we have only one POC we will be working and we will be efficiently handle it. It's like an agriculture platform that we have used. So there, they don't have that agriculture team. People also will come to our environment, our company, and we will be joined together and working on the part. So they don't have much knowledge about the coding development. So simply they'll be using Azure ML automated ML platform. Okay. 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 Any question from the participation, participant side? Participants are requested to uh, ask question. Any question, sir? Selvin, no. sir, please post a feedback link in the chat box. I think no question. Yes, sir, it is. No question. Hello? I request Dr. D. Rajeshwari, assistant professor, to give the word of thanks. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. S. Dinesh Kumar, for your wonderful session. You have given an excellent session on distributed parallel processing on IoT platforms. Uh, this session started with the introduction of IoT, industrial IoT, and protocol layers of IoT, and how to select the distributed and parallel processing for business. You clearly mentioned the communication protocols for IoT cloud and cloud, and also explained the edge analysis. With the hands on, you have clearly explained how the data are collected from the sensor and then transferred to Kafka cluster using MQTT, then fetched the streaming data using SPARC, and finally stored it in Hadoop environment. So you have you really given us an input how to visualize the log data on data stored in Hadoop. Really, it was a wonderful session. Thank you, sir, for joining us today and giving us many takeaway knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And also, I thank the participants. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much to provide the opportunity to me. And really, it's a very great pleasure for me. Okay, and thank, thank you all for your team. Thank and you very much for your FB, FDP development also. Thank you very much. I request all the participants to fill the feedback. Feedback link has been posted in the chat box. Don't forget to fill the, the feedback link. The same thing will be considered for attendance for this particular session. Kindly fill up the feedback link. We have afternoon session. Afternoon session as per the schedule, 2 o'clock it will start. All are requested to assemble by 2 o'clock in the online. Okay. Thank you. Shall I drop? Okay, sir.